Hi and welcome to the next video in the Red Hat Certified System Administrator series. Today's video is on using grep and regular expressions to analyze text. So firstly, what is a regular expression? So regular expression provides an ability to match uh, a string of text in a very flexible and concise manner. A string of text can be further defined as a single character, word, sentence, or a particular pattern of characters, perhaps. Like the shells, you know, wild cards, which, you know, like stars and stuff like that, which match similar file names with a single expression, grep uses an expression of different sort to match a group of similar patterns. So you've got uh, a, a fairly long list, I've put it in the description below on the video, of uh, different um, expressions you can use in grep, the common ones at least. Um, I'll just go through um, quite a few of them here. Uh, so let's just bring up the terminal. So first things first, I've just created a file called Kafka, which is just some example text. Uh, Kafka. So we just do a VR and now just have a look. So yeah, just a, a wall of text as such. It's uh, quite a few lines. Let's just run that to quit. Okay. So let's try a, so it's the square brackets first, which actually matches any one of a set of characters. So if we do grep, it's the command to, to do the searching, and then we provide the regular expression. So we can do this, like this, C, so we can do C, C, for example, like that, A, and then that, T, to do let's just do like this so C C F F A and then we do brackets R R T T for example and then close the brackets and then put it against the file. So let me just explain what's going on here. So grep will do the searching, this is the uh, searching against the regular expression. So the regular expression is inside these brackets. So we have matching against anything inside here. So the first letter will have to be either uppercase C or lowercase C, uppercase F or lowercase F, then the middle character will be an A, then it's an uppercase R, lowercase R, uppercase T, lowercase T. So you could match anything or like could be car, um, far, cat for example. So let's just see what comes up. And for in this example we can see that actually car is matched or against the word career so we haven't specified this the end of the word or anything like that so it's going to search inside words etc and so you've got a match against the career in if as in car for that one so let's do uh, you can also do ranges as in that as well so if we do another grep for the very same so again like this and we just do have perhaps we do one like this just a, an A to Z, all lowercase. So that would be just a lowercase A to Z in this case. Again, Kafka. So we've got matching it against day because we've got DA and then anything A to Z. So obviously that's what Y is in that list. Let's do another one. We can, fur we can do some further in there. So we can do combinations of multiple. So we can do like a DA. A to I, and then we can multi have multiple, of course, against each character inside the <coughs> inside the file. Okay, uh, that's not matched against anything. What have I done there? So I'm probably looking to remove. I think I've got an extra character there. Whoops. Yeah. So anything A to I, A to Z, so that should match against the. So we've got an additional matches here, so we've got matches against day, we've also got matches D D E, D D I, D E D. So D E D, yep, yeah, within that. E D, yep. Yeah. D D I all makes sense, yep. Yeah. So you can see you've got more for matches there for the various so you can see kind of how it works there, like that. So if you wanted just a match against day, for example. We could just do perhaps uh, a Y to Z range maybe. And we're just going back to that match. I'll just do that again just to 
be clear. See, we're just matching against the Y again because we've just moved that a tiny bit smaller. Excellent. Okay. The next one, if I just clear the screen here, is uh, to match the beginning of a line. So if we have a look again at the file, I'll just show you what beginning of line looks like. So if we go to the very start, so you can see there the he is the beginning of that line. You can see look if I look at the if I look in VI here, at the very bottom we've got three comma fifteen. So it's the fifteenth character on the third line. So the first word is he, his, his, etc. Okay, cool. So let's do the another grep. And then do the quotes again. Okay, and then we need the carrot symbol, which is that one. And then let's do he Kafka again. There you go, so the two lines that start with he are matched there. Cool. So also, we can do something with LS actually with this is quite nice. So you can see we've got a mixture of directories and files. So again, we, we, as we know from previous videos, Ds mean directories and Is mean files. Uh, dashes mean files, sorry. So we can actually do a ls minus L pipe, as we saw in the last video, grep, quote, the caret symbol, then a D. So if it starts with D, as in that one, we'll just get the directories, as you can see there, which is quite nice. And then you can do the opposite, we can do just four directories. There we go, nice and easy one, that one. That's quite a useful little command if you want to just list directories or files. Cool. So you can also use that caret symbol in another way, and that's combining that with the square brackets, and that what what that makes it is a an inverse inverted match. So it that must not contain the particular characters. So let's do this grep again, and we're going to do that day one just before. So square brackets d square. Oops, sorry. Should do d then square bracket then the Carrot symbol a minus to e the range and then the e letter and then Kafka. So you can see it's only mentioned against the d r e because r is the only is is outside that scope. So you got the uh, even if we put the y at the end that would not match. So we can do. An A to Z here, and we're not getting any matches against the the day as previous, as you can see. We've got a hell of a lot more matches because we're matching against A to Z. Typically, we're going to come up with lots of things. So I think we had like that. So we're just matching against the word Dre or <laughs> Dr. Dre, perhaps, uh, or Dreams. It's going against Dream, Drew, etc. So you can see it's got quite a few matches. Okay, so that's just an example of using the, the carrot with the square bracket. Let's clear, clear that again. Now the next one is the uh, dollar sign, or dollar symbol. Uh, this pattern forces the, uh, the pattern preceding it must occur at the end of the line essentially. So if you put any word or letter or whatever, that should, if you put the uh, dollar symbol at the end, that forces that to have to be at the end of a particular line. So we can do an example again. So we've got the word "cot" at the very end, at the very end of this, the uh, uh, document we have. So if we do uh, Kafka again, there you go. So we've got the "got." Let me just show you, give you a bit of context again. So we've actually got see a very. It's just been cut off because it's an example text at the very bottom, but you've got "got." And that's at the very end of the line. Yeah, so right at the end there. Cool. <clears throat> okay. Excellent. So that's uh, 
the dollar sign. Okay. Next one uh, is the dot or full stop. This matches any one character. So we can do another grep. St dot. So any one character. Any one character again. ID and Kafka. So it's matching the word stupid. <laughs> so yeah, because you got the, the each character either side because done you know A to Zs and stuff like that previous, and it's just these two are just getting matched by the two dots. So it's quite a nice way to match against. If you know the start, start and the end are common, or perhaps on the file maybe it's a particular date or something like that. Um, but you don't really care about the you know the middle section. You can actually just put the dots or whatever to um, to match those quite nicely. Okay, the next one is using a backslash. So um, the backslash actually turns off the special meaning of these characters. So like we just had that dollar symbol, um, the dot symbol, etc. Because they're special characters in grep, so many use them, they will use it only in that context. So they'll start matching against, for example, the dot matches against any one character. Um, <clears throat> so by using those, they, they can't be used basically because of that. So adding that the backslash option allows you to actually use that character correctly. So uh, I'll do a couple examples to explain this. So uh, we look for an out. So there should be an out to the end of a line. So what we have is this. Let me just explain that as we go. Okay. So out is the just this whole word. We then got a, a, a backslash and a full stop or dot and then a dollar sign. So what we're looking for is uh, the word out and then a full stop and then a, a, the end of the line because I'm not slashing again so it's looking for the end of the line we're using that um, the dollar sign as it, as it should be used in regular expression. So if I press enter now there we go so it's matching against the word out at the very end of the line with the full stop. Excellent. Okay, let's do one more example. Grep. I think there's the word hell. And we put this one and this one. Okay. <clears throat> Again, yet, yeah, so it's just the word, whole word hell with capital H. Notice a case sensitive. And then the backslash and then the exclamation mark there. Just do, and then it, so basically, it's only looking for that, that actual file, not using it in any regular expression context. And you can see that it's matched up nicely. Excellent. Okay. So now we go on to the star or the wildcard character. So this uses it matches against zero or more occurrences of the previous character. So this is one that's regularly confused. It, in regular expression, it behaves differently to. Um, a lot of CLI or command lines. So <clears throat> it's important to know this is looking at the previous character. So if you've got a, a pound sign or whatever, it's looking for that pound sign again. So um, I'll just do another example here. So if we do a grep, I'll try and build a fairly complex one this time. So we're trying to build up our knowledge. So put the uh, star or wildcard uh, symbol there. Okay, so that's going to look for zero or more occurrences of the P character by doing that. Okay, we can do an E to Z. Okay, regular N. Okay, A to I and D. So, what do you reckon that's going to match against? So we've got HAP. Multiple characters of multiple or none matches of P. Then you got E to Z, N, A to I, and D. If we're looking here, we're matching against happened. The word happened. It's all it matches all the criteria. Two P's, so zero or more. E to Z for the next character. N, A to I which is the E and the final D.
Cool. That's a fairly complex example. It's a good one. Okay. So the final example is the dot with the wild card. This uh, again makes the, it makes the wild card behave exactly like a wild card. So let's do a fairly similar example. So we're going to look at the happened again, but we're going to do it this, and we're going to see how it behaves differently. So we're doing a, a dot, and then the wild card. Imagining it's happened again. So what's happened is <laughs> exactly uh, is it's matching against any thing that goes HAP and then anything in the middle, any any millions of characters in the middle, and then the ED. So it's exactly what it's matching up against. If I if I just left this open, you match until the end of the line. So that will literally match against any number of characters. Okay, uh, that really concludes the video on uh, regular expression. If there's anything that you feel I haven't covered or you want me to cover in a bit more detail, I'm happy to do another video. Um, I hope it's been informative for you. Um, if it has, hit subscribe, like the video if you don't mind, that would be awesome. Um, well, thanks again for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Thank you.